Hi, I'm Sam Vokes at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. I'm not sure why I say that. <laughs> of course it's the latest. <laughs> this, is, this is literally uh, the, the, the la- most up-to-date version of this show. It's the show. <laughs> it's the latest one, anyway. Uh, looking ahead to the trip to Forest Green Rovers, we'll look back at our FA Cup exit on Saturday at the hands of Walsall as well. We'll hear from manager Gareth Ainsworth and his post-match comments. Uh, he'll be uh, chatting to uh, Phil, as will we, in our match debrief as well in just a few moments' time. And uh, also we'll be hearing from the manager a little later on as well, uh, after he spoke to the media a uh, little earlier on today from the training ground. In fact, uh, today we speak to uh, people from Wickham. Uh, who are based there? Uh, we speak to people or a person who is currently in Spain and someone else who's in Twickenham. <laughs> Geographically, quite spread out this week. Uh, lots to look forward to. We'll catch up with Viz Bu- Viv Busby, uh, who was a striker in the uh, mid to late 60s at Lokes Park and uh, got quite a few goals as well. He's the one who currently lives in Spain, by the way. You might have worked that out already. And we'll catch up with Esme Sword, who is a Wickham Wanderers uh, current forward uh, for Wickham Wanderers Women. She was uh, player of the match in last Sunday's fixture against Ascot, the league leaders, who uh, uh, the chair girls came from behind to uh, get a point uh, against, which is a good result from her, uh, for them. Well, and a good result for her, actually. <laughs> it's a good result all round. Uh, all that to come on the way in the next hour or so. But first... Let's bring you some highlights of uh, FA Cup Round 1, Walsall, Adams Park. Welcome to Adams Park, live from the Bill Turnbull Gantry here at the back of the Frank Adams stand. Wonderful view of the action. All over the top looking for Vokes. Poor clearance by Daniels. Vokes spins across in Vokes! Goes for goal and it's tipped over the bar by Owen Evans. And Sam Vokes is up for the cup, but so is the keeper. First call yeah, of the Great save from Evans there, but Vokes just turned inside, got it on his favourite... Right foot, didn't he? And volleyed it. Looked destined for the, to the roof of the net. Great save by Evans. Mawson comes to join in. And it goes to the back post. Wakely's nearly there. And Tapazoli's being bundled over. But no penalty. Goal kick. Ball's going to be whipped in now. By Gordon. Good delivery. Goes to the back post. And it's there. Maddox scores on the volley. And Wickham's woes from set pieces continue. Gordon whips it in. And Maddox, right-footed, slams it past Strick, who had no chance in the Wickham goal. And the finger-pointing in the Wicker defence starts again. Wickham nil, Walsall 1. It was a great finish from Maddox. He's come in and smashed it first time, but who was picking him up? Wow. You know, the corner's come over. Everyone's looking at each other. Great finish, but um, question marks over the defending. Let's him down. Wickham clear to Vokes, who's grappling with Monte. Gets it back to McCarthy. McCarthy over the top, looking for Hanlon. Daniel's defence, but Wing gets onto it. Feeds it to Hanlon. Kai Kai's in acres of space. Oh, the ball's over here. Kai Kai Lo is in the box. Goes past one. He goes down. Referee says penalty. Penalty to Wickham. Wickham have the penalty. Kai Kai beat his man on the outside. The leg was dangled by, was it Comley? It's Knowles that they're defending. And it's a penalty to Wickham. And who takes this? There's no Jacobson. It's Brandon Hanlon who's got the ball in his hands. Brandon Hanlon then in front of the valley end. It's a quite a central run. Three or four space uh, steps up to the ball. It's going to be right-footed. Evans is bouncing up and down on his toes here. Hanlon dances up to the ball and it's saved. Keeper bounced his way out and went down low to his right. And it's a save by Owen Evans and it's not Wickham's day yet. Back to Kinsella. Runs forwards with it. Goes down the channel. Defended by Wickham. But Monte has the ball now. Lays it to Maddox. Maddox has got away from wing now. Maddox on the left wing. Inside the box goes on the outside. It's a great run. Cuts the ball back. It goes right away across. And it's there. It's 2 0. Wickham Wanderers undone down the left hand side. And it's Hutchinson with the strike. And the Walsall fans in raptures. And there's an FA Cup upset on the cards here at Adams Park. Wickham nil, Walsall 2. Mamete, oh, he's done really well to get away from Kinsella. Goes past Knowles, goes past another. And it's Mamete! Rolls the ball past the post from the shot. It was a jinking run. It was Maradona-esque, wasn't it? Slippery. Dropping a shoulder, beating two, three. Right-footed shot, though. Not the power or the accuracy. Corner comes in. Near post. Morsa gets up! Across the face of goal. And it's a goal kick. Ball down. Down to Daniels. Freeman in midfield releases Mometi. Mometi now on the run. 
left hand side he goes inside still going Mometi goes for goal but it's straight at the keeper comfortable save from Evans and the referee blows his full time whistle it's Walsall that progress into the second round of the FA Cup it'll be their name in the hat on Monday night and Wickham Wanderers face the exit in the first round once more following on from last year's exit against Hartlepool no cup run for Wickham Wanderers this year it's time to concentrate on the league Absolutely, a really bitterly disappointing afternoon from Wickham. They just never really got going at all. They had that early chance, didn't they, uh, which um, Evans saved. But it's, it's literally all afternoon. Uh, Walsall have, have controlled the game. They got the goals at right times. Uh, obviously, the penalty save was a big blow from a Wickham perspective. But look, there's no arguments this afternoon. Walsall have thoroughly deserved to win the tie and uh, progress to the second round. We've got some snacks to get through now, mate. We certainly have. The one upside of today was the Port Scratchings. We'll leave you with the full-time score here in the FA Cup first round. League 1, Wickham Wanderers nil. League 2, Walsall 2. <laughs> the one upside was the Port Scratchings. Uh, our match commentator there, Phil Catchpole, uh, alongside him summarising Brian Jeeves. Uh, Phil, I'm sure, as you're aware, uh, brings you the uh, commentary games here on Wickham Sound and also on Wanderers TV. He's also the club's head of audio and broadcast, uh, hosts a uh, fantastic podcast uh, called Ring in the Blues as well. Well worth a listen. And uh, caught up with him a little earlier on today to reflect, uh, first of all, on that cup upset. Yeah, disappointing day really, and then compounded because on the Monday night is the draw, and the you know there's a couple of games on the TV over the weekend, and you kind of watch those with a heavy heart, knowing that you're not involved anymore. Um, big opportunity, I thought, for Wickham to progress this season, but credit to Walsall on the day, I thought they were excellent, um, and Wickham, you know, came up short, and and it's the set piece element again that was really concerning. Um, um, I think the plus side of this week being there's been no midweek fixture. So I'm absolutely certain that Gareth Fangsworth and his team would have been working incredibly hard on how they can eradicate this going into Forest Green. But yeah, it was just, you know, it was a, it was a flat afternoon at Adams Park. And I think, you know, circumstances, four home games on the spin in quick succession. I think it combining with bonfire night as well and the, and the bad weather. Uh, yeah, crowd was, was flat as well. Um, and it's just a shame that, you know, Wickham couldn't get through and and get themselves into that next round and and then hopefully then progress from there. But yeah, uh, it's concentrating on the league now, isn't it? That's the cliche that we roll out at this stage of the season. Um, so yeah, and you know what better opportunity now to go to Forest Green? Hopefully, can get back on track in the league. Still just five points off the playoffs, but we'll see. I mean, Gareth Ainsworth, um, incredibly bullish after the game as well, saying you know, obviously his disappointment in the performance uh, and and the result against Walsall, but you know, reiterating that he, he felt confident that, uh, of achieving in the league this season. And, and here's what he had to say after the game. We almost got back in this, you know, penalty, I think, is a big turning point. And, you know, for all the world, you want Brandon to score that in front of the home end. Uh, but that sort of, you know, put the uh, the icing on the cake for, for Walsall, you know, a penalty save. And then they go around the other end and score a second, which puts us out of the game. But I thought we, we liked a bit of fight, a little bit of desire, you know, there was... There's a couple of changes in the team, a couple of people getting opportunities and uh, and I've got to make sure that you know we get back to that team that beat Peterborough here and, and the team that won away at Oxford and things like that. So um, we know we can do it, it's just now finding that, that magic formula that we uh, we had only a couple of weeks ago, you know. That fight and desire has been your hallmark really throughout your tenure. Is it disappointing that it's been lacking today? It was, yeah, it was. You know, it was. Uh, the, the, I thought the Walsall fans uh, got right behind their team. They they were very loud today, and, and you could hear them all game. And and I think Walsall gave them something to shout about. You know, and and sometimes my players have to get this, this place going and create their own atmosphere. But um, Walsall stepped on us from the start. You know, they uh, they scored from a corner, and uh, and then the second goal really disappoints me. You know, danced right through us, and we didn't seem to we didn't seem to stop any any anyone was ready to stop that happening and, and that really killed us off because at 1-0 you've always got a chance I think you know there's nerves coming to that and, um, made a lot of changes in the second half early enough for hopefully people to impact but it just didn't happen and, uh, and we've got to make sure that we, we pick the bones out of it quick and get ready for Forest Green in the league next week because we need to get back to winning ways that's uh, three or four without a win now and, uh, and that's, that's something I've got to address Going back to the first goal a corner another set piece Yeah Listen, ultimately, I'll take responsibility for it. I do. Uh, and I've, I've got to make sure that when we do defend set pieces, we're, we're better than we've been in the, last, uh, in the last few games. So, yeah, put that one to bed. 
our set pieces, and including penalties, we've got to make them count, and uh, and that would have been a big turning point today. Um, gutted, you know, because uh, you know it wasn't a, a great a great occasion. It wasn't a, a massive uh, a massive turnout today, but we've got to make sure that we. Uh, we're better than the teams that are below us, especially in divisions, you know, and, and we've got some good, good players out there. They just didn't turn up today and uh, and I, I'm I'm looking for the reasons. I'll, I'll have to work through this one and, and, and find out just why Walsall just stepped on us that little bit today. Disappointing for me because, like you say, that's been our hallmark for, for many years um, and we've got to get back to that hard to beat. Um, not nasty, but... but People not liking to come to Wickham and uh, at the moment it's just a little bit easy to come here and, and get the points. You often like to find the positives. Any positives today? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Ryan Tafazola getting minutes, Sulikaka, TJ, you know, so there's some positives. Anis Mamati, I thought, came on and looked very exciting again and where he is. Uh, Josh Collins very close to coming back as well, which is great, you know. Um, saving a few legs, you know, Gareth McClure have picked up a knock in the, in the last game, so he'll be back for next Saturday. Chris Farino, similar, got a knock Tuesday and he'll be back for next Saturday. So um, plenty of positives, you know. I think we missed some of our big players. Um, but when, you know, when we're not at full strength, I still expect us to, to be more competitive than they were today. But ultimately, I'm the manager, down to me. I'll sort it. Wickham fans must be very excited about hearing the name Josh go and, and nearly back. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's been training on the outside on the pitches now, you know, and, and it's... It's unfortunate that we've lost our, our midfield this season. You know, um, Lewis and Nick and, and Wheels have all been trying to fill in there. You know, and like I say, Lewis is probably the only natural midfielder. Um, but the destroyers of, of Scowen and Gape and Thompson, you know, have all been missing all season. Um, well, not Josh, but um, coincidentally, Josh was back when we were picking points up. So we've got to make sure that we are, we're super competitive with those players in the team. And uh, so there's going to be one or two changes now, you know, and the squad's going to get very, very competitive. And I'm sure there's going to be some disappointed players here, but that's football. I've got to put my best team out there to win the points. We want to give it a real go in League One now. And there's no cups left. All we've got is the league. I intend to have a great second half of the season and make those playoffs. That's that's the aim. Great to hear from the manager, of course, and always very optimistic as always. But watching the last sort of few games, and as you say, those four at home, it really seems to be those defensive errors that have crept in. Yeah, that's it's the fine margins, isn't it? Because you know, if you defend a set piece better, if Sam Vokes gets one of his goals allowed, um, you know, maybe Wickham are looking at an extra. I don't know, six points even. Um, and, and where does that put them in the table? So uh, that's where we're at, really. Um, but refereeing decisions are not why Wickham are losing these games. You know, you can't control those. You can control defensive errors. Uh, and there's been plenty of those of late at set pieces. And and it's not been easy. The, injured, the injury um, situation, especially in defence and midfield, um, has meant there's been lots of chopping and changing. Um, you know, the keeper came in after five games as well. So there's been a lot of change back there. Um, and, you know, a lot of transitioning character that's been mentioned as well in terms of people leaving the club and et cetera. Um, so, yeah, it's it does feel a, a period of transition. I think a lot of hope from the fans is being pinned on the return of, of the likes of Josh Goh and Dominic Gape. Uh, Ryan Tafazoli and, you know, great to see Taff getting 90 under his belt against Warsaw. Um, so, yeah, so you think, you know, once things start to drop into place, you hope the club can start to build a bit of momentum, really. But, yeah, I think if you give goals away, Colin, it's just really difficult to win football matches, especially in, in this incredibly competitive League One. It's interesting, isn't it, what you can take from draws. Obviously, the last two uh, league games, uh, the points have been shared and, and sometimes it feels like a point gained. But with those two games, especially, it feels like a couple dropped. Yeah, it does because they're at home and you know, Morecambe bottom of the table. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it shows you that the league from top to bottom is has got teams who are really scrapping um, and there's not an easy game in League One. Um, yeah, and it's just, I think, the nature of the home games and it coming off the back of those three consecutive wins, um, which fans were sort of looking at that run thinking, oh, that's tricky. Um, and, and Wickham flew, flew through that and then everyone... You know, I think we all did maybe got a bit ahead of ourselves, saw the run of fixes coming up and seeing the home games and thinking, wow, we can really use this to kick on now. Um, but football's not like that, is it? As we know. So um, there we are. But it's, yeah, it's it's one defeat in six. They're five points off the playoffs. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. That's the glass is half full. Um, but yeah, I think people also see the glass is half empty side of it as well by saying that, 
you know, it's three home games in a row without a win. Um, and um, if we can really want to achieve, that's going to hold them back. So I think for, for table watchers, I assume there is such a thing, uh, the, people will be surprised. I think that MK Dons, you know, down the wrong end of the table, Oxford probably lower than people would expect as well. Um, you know, there's, there's, there are a number of teams who, who are not having quite the, the sort of fortunes that would be expected of them. Yeah, and, you know, it's, there's no surprise in, in a lot of that because every team would have started this season going, right, we want to achieve something this season. Uh, you know, majority of them would have been going for top six. There, of course, are teams in there who are, who are thinking, right, our ambition this season is not to get relegated and consolidate and build. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that Wickham Wanderers were in that position. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 tough. You know, for MK Dons, they fell at the in the playoff hurdle uh, one fence before we did. Had a lot of transition in their squad as well. Um, and they're probably thinking like us, thinking, right, second half of the season, we're really going to bed in and settle down and, and go on a, on a big run. And there's often a team or a couple of teams that really string something together in that second half of the table and, uh, of the season and fly up the table. Um, and Wickham Wanderers will be very much hoping it's them. And we come up against the team this weekend, of course, who, who have had quite a struggling start themselves too. Yeah, first time at this level. Um, I think they've they've done brilliantly, you know, in terms of their recent rise. I mean, bearing in mind they're a football team based in the village on top of a hill. Um, and here they are in League One, uh, alongside the likes of Derby County, Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Ipswich Town, Portsmouth, etc. Um, so you've really got to give them a lot of credit for what they've done. Um, I think, looking back to what we mentioned just a minute ago, that first time back into League One, obviously Wickham have been in League One before at this level. Um, but they fought so hard to get out of League Two and that first season was all about survival, wasn't it? And, and making sure uh, you, you, you don't lose all the hard work to get into that division. And that's probably where Forrest Green are at. They lost their manager in the summer when he went to Watford um, and Ian Birch was come in. Um, and yeah, it's, I think it's tough when you come in off the back of, of a success rather than someone who's been fired um, because you've got to then get your own identity into the team and, and keep it going. And he's had to do that while stepping up a level as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're in touch down the bottom. It's tight down there. We know it's a tight division. Um, we also know, after playing bottom of the table, Morecambe as it was when we when we played them at Adams Park, um, that there is no easy game because they were bottom and they came out and fought like Tigers that day. And I'm sure Forrest Green will do as well. I just finally, um, supporters may well have heard, you know, talk this week about the, the ownership future of the club and the trust meeting. And I guess that's important that, that you know, that, that on the pitch activities that don't sort of distract from that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's nice that we can talk about football match now uh, this week. It's been um, quite a busy week with uh, the trust meeting at Adams Park on uh, uh, last night. Um, lots of fans. Um, frustrated not to be able to get into that initially and then the information sort of coming out today hopefully for people to get their teeth into and see what's going on with that um, but yeah it's, uh, it'll be nice to talk about a football match on Saturday and uh, hopefully uh, uh, a three points for Wickham Wanderers as well We look forward to hearing you describing the game from the top of the hill Yeah I'm looking for I think it's it's either the, the highest or second highest football league ground in the country I think it Might be windy then I, I always, always. And I'm looking forward to um, some nice vegan food because last time I was there, the food was excellent. Food and football, uh, your accompaniment for the game on Saturday. Uh, last weekend was pork scratchings. This weekend, vegan food. Uh, Phil will be bringing us match commentary on Wanderers TV and here on Wickham Sound 106.6. From three o'clock on Saturday, the uh, match build up starts from two. And don't forget, you can hear uh, chats with Gareth in full on Wanderers TV. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Still to come on this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll hear more from manager Gareth Ainsworth and we'll catch up with a Wickham Wanderers women striker as well. But first, another forward if you're following uh, Wickham Wanderers in the 60s, uh, from 1966 to 1970, uh, you'll know the name Viv Viv Busby. Uh, Recently, uh, he's also played for uh, clubs uh, up and down uh, the country as well in his professional career. Uh, So uh, a fantastic uh, career indeed, as I say, and uh, was also a manager as well. Uh, for the likes of uh, Hartlepool and York. And recently, he was uh, honoured by Fulham, another of his former clubs. Uh, He uh, there was inducted into their Hall of Fame. Uh, Now retired and living in Spain, and uh, got to catch up with him and uh, find out a bit more about, uh, first of all, uh, that honour at Craven Cottage. Yeah, it was great. um, They've been trying to uh, get me back for a couple of years, and I felt as though I needed to go back, and it was a... it was a poignant day because they were playing Everton 
And when we got through to the FA Cup final, we played Everton away and I got both goals. We won 2-1. So they thought it was uh, would be a nice day for, uh, you know, to associate the two, really. Um, but they really looked after us and a uh, fantastic day. Got nice applause from the crowd. So, um, yeah, all in all, it was uh, it was very nice. You must have such great memories from your time at Craven Cottage, especially playing with the likes of George Best and Bobby Moore as well. Yeah, I mean, they, they were fantastic. I mean, Bobby was... Uh, uh, absolutely brilliant. He was, I think, he was about 33 at the time, and uh, he came to Fulham, and he was, he was unbelievable. Learned so much off him. Great fellow, nice man. And uh, when he when he spoke, you listened, and he talked a lot of sense, and he, he sort of improved my game uh, quite a bit in terms of little technical things that you could do, and uh, you know he would uh, he would be on the ball, and he would he would be unbelievable. Um, and it was fantastic to play with him and to play with George. George was uh, come back from America and he was he was at it, if I can use that uh, phrase. He wasn't messing about. He was uh, having a real go and uh, it was a pleasure to play with him and see some of the things he could do with the ball was amazing. So uh, all in all, it was uh, it was a great great time, a great, a great era. So we should talk about your time at Wickham. How did that come about? Because you, you were following in your father's footsteps. Yeah, my dad played for Wickham. Yeah, that was uh, amazing. Um, I was playing for Terry as under 18s, and uh, the manager at the time at Wickham was Barry Darvill, and he, he was up watching the game in the morning. They were playing at home in the afternoon. I think I was 16, playing under in under 18s, and um, after the game, he knew my dad, and uh, he asked if I'd like to go training on Tuesday and Thursday and see, you know, just take it from there. So I was so pleased to do that. It was unbelievable because I used to go and watch them every Saturday afternoon if they were at home. And I used to go with my nan. She lived uh, about 100 yards from Lokes Park on on Southern Road. And she used to go and she used to take me and my brother. And uh, I can remember being there when I was 10, 11, watching the boys. And uh, uh, it was great. And to go and actually play with them when I was uh, 16 or train with them when I was 16, actually... Played my first game when I was 17. I think it was against Corinthian Casuals away from home. And uh, that was unbelievable, yeah. But great days, really. And those boys that I played with, they're my heroes. I absolutely love them. I went, I went back about five years ago. John Bignan, a big friend of mine, he, uh, he invited me back. And me and Bob, my partner, went back and uh, had a great day. Met, met all the boys. And uh, that was fantastic. And I, I obviously keep a good eye on them now and watch the progress and uh, Keith Samuels rings me up now and then Martin Priestley rings me up now and then and we have a chat and they're always sending me when they have these golf days and dinners they send me pictures and uh, I've just received some from John and from Martin um, and it's great to see the boys I mean some of them they're in their 80s and they look fantastic We spoke about the success at Fulham but obviously it must be so special for you to have played for your, your hometown club Oh, it was amazing, yeah, absolutely. As I say, I went to watch them and, you know, you land up playing with them and it's it's absolutely amazing. And they were good players, really good players. I mean, a lot of them could have turned pro at the time, but obviously the wages for being a pro was, wasn't was very good and they'd all got jobs, um, decent jobs. So uh, they refused. I think Lenny Worley played as an amateur for Tottenham, if I recall correctly. I'm not uh, 100% on that, but... Um, they were they were they would have all been good pros now this, this day and age, um, but then it wasn't uh, it wasn't worth them doing it really. Um, so they just stayed at Wickham and they enjoyed what they did, and it was great to play with them. Did you find it a real grounding for your own sort of professional career as well? Yeah, I mean you learned uh, you learned a lot from those boys. I mean uh, to, to play with them it was you know it was like a dream come true for me. Um, as I say, watching them and then all of a sudden playing with them, it's uh, it's fantastic. As I say, though, those days stick out vividly in my memory. Um, I've had a, a you know a good career spanning forty years, and uh, that is a good that was a good grounding for me. I learned so much from the boys, and it was an absolute pleasure to play in front of your home crowd in your hometown. On your goal scoring record, that must be something you're very proud of as well. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how many I got down there, but 
it was nice to score goals and um, to play, as I say, to play with you know Tony Orsman, Paul Bates, people like that, Sammy, uh, Lenny. It was uh, it was great, and uh, you know to play in front of your home crowd. And my nan used to come. She was just she was, she was about seventy five then, I think. She used to come and have a, have a little look, and uh, she was wicked mad, wicked wondrous mad. And uh, obviously, as I say, my dad played for him as well. And my brother played in the reserves for him, and then he turned pro at QPR. So uh, all in all, it was a fantastic, you know, from seven, from 17 to 20 when I turned pro, I had three great years there, and uh, it sticks out vividly in my memory, as I say. Are there any particular games or goals or occasions that, that, that really spring to mind as, as highlights? I think the first one was Clinton Casual the way I think, and I scored. Um, so that stands out in your mind. And uh, I think we played in a Berks and Berks Cup, and I think I don't forget who we played, but I think we, we won about eight two, and I scored three, I think. So they were good memories. But to play at Lokes Park on the slope, that was something different, and it was fantastic. I can't, I can't, I can't tell you how much uh, I really loved playing with those boys, and uh, as I say, I, I, I regard them highly, and uh, they, they, they. In my mind and in my memory, they're, they're, they're absolute top draw. Really, really good players. And something which really stands out, having spoken to some of those uh, names that you mentioned, is, is just the camaraderie between you know yourselves in the dressing room, how well you all got on, and obviously still to this day as well. Yeah, obviously, yeah. It was, uh, it was fantastic, because I was a young lad, um, and they were sort of, uh, some of them were early 20s, some of them were a little bit older. Um, but they sort of got round me and sort of uh, embraced me into the fold, if you like. And uh, I felt very, very proud to uh, to actually actually play for them. And the boys, as I say, were fantastic. I mean, I used to uh, I used to be a cost accountant when I was playing for Wickham, and I um, I worked at Wuben, and uh, I was that proud to get my Wickham bag. I used to take my Wickham bag get a bus into Wickham from Wuban and I used to stop two stops earlier so I could walk through the town with my bag with Wickham Wanderers on it. That's how much it meant to me at the time. And uh, those things I remember high, you know, very much, very much indeed. That's brilliant to hear, especially you know, considering the other clubs that you played for as well, but, but Wickham obviously so special to you. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I've played for a lot of clubs and coached at a lot of places. Um, but your first one is always... Uh, I feel sticks out in your memory a lot more than the others I mean Fulham was a bit special because we played in the FA Cup final which was great and it was absolutely a fantastic day um, not many players get to do that but um, to start with those boys and play for the for your hometown uh, something special and something I've been very proud of And you mentioned coaching how did you find the, the transition to coaching and obviously uh, managing as well? I think it's the next best thing to, from playing. Obviously, uh, I started coaching when I finished playing. I finished playing when I was about 33, I think. Um, went to York City and they were bottom of the fourth division and we took them to the third uh, FA Cup rounds against Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, and just to pass on your knowledge, and uh, I changed little bits and pieces uh, and used the ball all the time, whereas the the old re- regime when I was started at Luton was you just run, you just used to run every day and do circuits and weights and all sorts of stuff. But uh, the transformation was great, especially when you're successful like we were at, uh, to start at York. Um, that's a bit special as well because, uh, you know, there's nothing like coaching during the week and seeing something come on a Saturday that you've actually practiced and uh, the boys put it into motion. So, uh I really enjoyed the coaching side of it. I mean, I had 25 years in it, and it was uh, it was great. I had some big clubs and some work with some great people, some great players. And having played for the club in the 60s, do you feel you know really you know part of the, the history and kind of a help, if you like, is to, to have built the club as to, as to where it is today? I think um, at that time in the 60s, late 60s, um, they go down. They do go. They will go down in history because that was Wickham Wanderers probably at its best until I got into the, the professional league when Martin O'Neill took over. I think he took them to the league, um, which was somewhat special for him as well. Then the new ground, but I think those boys that uh, 
that played in those days, uh, well respected by all the people that, are, that go to the ground now, and uh, they, all, they all look into the history, and uh, those boys are really special. And so well supported as well. You see, you know, crowds of over seven thousand at Lokes Park for for even what you might be considering, you know, quite small games. Yeah, the crowds were unbelievable. Um, the ground was obviously old, and uh, the slope was there, and that was something different to play on. Um, but the crowds were great, really good crowds, um, and obviously they they played a big part in the success that was uh, was going on while we were there. So just for people that don't know, I'm sure people will be interested to know uh, what you're doing these days. As I say, we, we find you're in Spain. Yeah, um, retired here 10 years ago. Um, living in Mahaka, I met a friend of mine who I played with at Luton and Norwich, John Ryan. Um, he rang me up and we were in near Marbella. We moved out to Marbella, near Marbella. And he rang me up and said, are you in Spain? And I went, yeah, he said, you need to come and see us. So he said, uh, I said, where are you? So he said, Mahaka. So we came up here and um, we moved up here from near Marbella, where I've been going on holiday for 30 years. Um, and this place is really good. It's no high rise, no motorways. And it's a really tranquil place. Really enjoyed uh, catching up with Viv Busby and getting his memories and reflections on his time at Lokes Park. A uh, big thank you, of course, to Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association who got their uh, dinner returning uh, after uh, COVID next Friday. Uh, if you fancy going along to that, a uh, fantastic opportunity to uh, see and meet uh, some of the uh, stars of the club's past. Uh, manager Martin O'Neill, you might have heard JDT telling us uh, last week as well. We'll be there with his new autobiography. You can get a signed copy of that. Uh, for additional Wickham Wanderers nostalgia, why not check out Wanderers TV, where there's a great feature called Goalkeeper to Artist, the story of the 1957 Cup final keeper, uh, Dennis Sirrett, who've had on uh, the show as well, of course. Uh, fantastic to, uh, again, uh, get his thoughts and uh, find out a bit more about his art in later life as well. And, of course, uh, the art of goalkeeping, which any goalkeeper will tell you is, is, <laughs> is quite uh, an art in itself. Continuing with our uh, notice board section... Still in its early early stages, the notice board section of, <laughs> of this show. But uh, Wickham Wanderers are, are putting on uh, a great special event uh, to be held at Adams Park. It's an evening with Dean Saunders, uh, compared by uh, Adja Brown, and uh, following the recent success of Gareth Ainsworth networking lunch, uh, which I caught the tail end of at Adams Park. I got to speak to the manager. You might have heard that uh, on this show as well. Uh, also, the Chairboys Golf Day, which was uh, very successful at Harleyford. Uh, the club are welcoming guests back to Adams Park for a sporting dinner. Uh, it will take place on a Thursday. I know. Uh, 20, good things happen on Thursday. 23rd of Feb from 6 o'clock. So you, you'll have to catch this on the podcast version, I imagine. Uh, guests will be enjoying spending an evening with the former Liverpool Aston Villa, Benfica and Wales legend, hearing stories from throughout his career on and off the pitch. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that um, during uh, uh, some of my uh, work, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time with Dean Saunders. He does tell a good story. <laughs> uh, there'll also be an opportunity to network with local businesses as well. Uh, the ticket price also includes a three-course meal, plus tea, coffee and mints. Mints. Uh, plus, uh, you get an official club chef. Will uh, will be uh, sorting out as well in the Caledonian suite. Uh, there'll also be uh, guests having the chance to enter an auction and be part of the club fundraising on the night as well. I've also witnessed uh, Phil, who we heard from a bit earlier on. His auctioneering was uh, very, very good. And a signed Gareth Ainsworth shirt went for nearly £500. Uh, you can find full details on the website, uh, Wickham Wanderers website. Or you can email commercial at wwfc.com for more details as well. Uh, to find out uh, more about that. It's taking place in the new year, 23rd of February, and even with Dean Saunders, I'm sure it'll be very, very popular. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM, this is Wickham Sound. Final part of the Wickham Wanderer show for this week. Still to come, we'll hear more from manager Gareth Ainsworth as he talks us through uh, the benefits of uh, not having a game on a Tuesday. <laughs> which has been the first week for a while uh, that that's not happened of course we'll look ahead to the trip to Forest Green Rovers on Saturday as well which we'll be able to hear live here on Wickham Sound 106.6 and on Wanderers TV as well of course but first uh, often on this show we like to uh, follow the progress of the chair girls Wickham Wanderers women uh, going through a sort of transition period it's been a great uh, sort of time for them on the back of the uh, Lionesses success uh, new home at Burnham new manager in uh, Carl Simon and of course they played at Adams Park for the first time in the FA Cup and I've uh, been speaking to uh, one of the new arrivals over the summer, Esme Sword, uh, who's a forward and, uh, of course, as you'd expect, uh, rather enjoying herself and time with the chair girls. It's been 
good. I mean, I am getting back into it. I've been I've been out of football for a few years because of a, an injury. So, you know, I'm getting back into it, but it's been really good so far. I mean, I've, I'm just kind of getting back into like working with a team and kind of feeling that, getting kind of gelling together and starting to get that bond. But um, yeah, I mean, we've had ups and downs, but we're getting there. Is there a real feeling of togetherness? Because obviously there are so many sort of new players, obviously a new um, head coach and team as well. And, and obviously you just recently uh, moved to your new, new home as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's t- taken a while and we have, you know, hit a few bumps along the way, but we've, everyone's working hard. You know, everyone wants the same outcome. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants that. So, um, yeah, I think we're, we are we're starting we are really starting to gel now as a team. I think um we are really coming together after our uh, most recent game. I kind of definitely saw a, a huge kind of shift in everyone's like work rate and just like mentality. I think everyone's kind of we're all really starting to gel together now and um yeah, it's getting really positive now. I guess it's bound to take a while as well with a new manager, you know, getting to play how he wants and getting everyone in their best positions and, and playing sort of your, yeah, your strongest yeah, eleven. De- yeah, definitely. And I think we had you know, we have a, we have a lot of players who are equally as good who all play the same position. So that's always kind of going to cause a little bit of a like trying to choose your uh, starting team. But I think everyone's just as everyone's just as good. Everyone works just as hard. And um, yeah, it's uh, you know, Carl Carl makes the decisions, and it seems to be working now. How have you found the sort of training and and the games themselves, the kind of the schedule, if you like? Yeah, really good. I mean, I'm. Used to it. I've been playing football for years and years, and I, yeah, I like it. I love. I like having something to do. I love training through the week, and especially when you can really clearly see that people, everyone's improving like week by week, and we're becoming more of a team each week. Yes, yeah, great. I'm, um, you know, love matches, and we are getting there. And playing at Anna's Park must have been a special occasion. Oh yeah, it was great. I mean, um, we played so well, and um, I mean, I played the I played the full ninety minutes at Adams Park, and it was a it was a tough one, but it was good. It was it was it was a great game, and it was yeah, such a good experience. Great stadium, great, really good publicity. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, it was really great. It must seem like such a great time to be involved with the team as well, especially with you know the Lionesses doing so well, and a great opportunity for people locally to to really get behind the the women's team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been we have been doing a lot to you know try and get our get our name out there and you can really see kind of we are kind of really trying to make it as professional as it as it can be and um really kind of make ourselves level with the men's team which I think it should be and you know we are on our way to be doing that um I think after the Euros I mean it was that was amazing just for the country and for kind of women's football in general and um I think that we kind of made really great strides in that area and um I think there's the only way is up, you know, it's only getting better from here. And are you really pleased with your own game, obviously, and how, how that's coming along? Yeah, yeah, I am. I mean, um, I scored the winning goal at Adams Park, so that was a good experience. I got the player of the match on Sunday, just gone. So I am I am really feeling myself improve as well. I mean, because I have been out for a few years, I really kind of spent pre-season and the beginning of the season really just trying to get back into it. But, you know, I enjoy it so much, and I but even just mentally, like when I kind of started playing football again, it was almost like a kind of release, and it was that was it, like it. It's just a very positive thing for me to be doing, and it, it you know, it helps, and it's it's great. I I love it. And some great character shown by the team on Sunday, taking on the league leaders, going a goal behind it, and pulling that goal back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was great. It was. Um, I mean, we all. I mean, everyone worked extremely hard. It was. Um, it was a tough game, but and we kind of we did go into it thinking, you know, they're top of the league. We got a, but we really proved ourselves. And I think sometimes it kind of takes us, kind of it happens a lot where we kind of go one nil down and then we kind of really pull it out of the bag. But I mean, we did go one nil down, and but from the very beginning we were, we we really wanted it. You could you could really tell that every player on the pitch wanted it so badly and. With the, all of our subs that uh, that came on, you know, they everyone made an impact in the game. It was everyone really pulled their weight, and it was unfortunate to to draw and not come out with a win. But um, everyone saw such an improvement and in our game and just in in everything, and it you know it just really shows kind of what we can do in the future. And does that feel like there might be a real turning point for the season as well? I think so, definitely. I think if we if we continue at the rate that we've been going. And, you know, kind of 
after a really good performance, it kind of boosts you again. So I think, yeah, I think the only way is it can only get better. And I think if if we all kind of work that well, we're, we're really gelling together now. And I think that could be, I could, I think that could be a real turning point. I mean, we all know we can do it. We're all great players. We all work really hard together, you know, and it just hasn't really shown in any of, any of our matches so far. And so it'll be good to just really kind of start start showing that and prove ourselves because I think some other teams kind of think we're you know not even worth the game but that's what we did on the weekend we've kind of really showed them that we are kind of a force to be reckoned with and we are a good team we, we work well together we play well and we can win that's a really good thing isn't it let's take into the next game because I'm sure Oxford City will have you know seen recent results and seen where you're on the table and think oh perhaps they're not doing very well but then then they say oh hang on a minute they, they take on the league leaders and, and, and pull, pull back with, level with them yeah, I think uh, definitely. I mean, after our match against um, Ascot, we where we drew, it was definitely like I think they were very shocked. They kind of went into the match really thinking that it was going to be easy. They were going to win, and um, I'm really I'm so glad that we kind of showed them. We were like, no, we we do have it. We can play. We and we showed them. And I think uh, going into the match on the weekend, I think we have to go in with the exact same kind of mentality and. And really, kind of show them what we can, what we can do because we can work so well together, and we we can win the match if we want to. We just got to work hard for it. I know when Carl first came in, he, he sort of joked that he got asked a lot, you know, what were his targets and what were his set targets. And is that something as a, as a striker you do? You, you set yourself, you know, the amount of goals you'd like to like to score? Uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously it's not all about me scoring. I'd rather I don't if, but winning is. I do want to win. To win, you have to score. Yeah, I would. I do have kind of high expectations of myself and I do get frustrated in matches when, you know, I ha- I'm not making the contributions I want to. But I think, you know, that will come. And I think the only way to progress in football is you have to be winning. So I probably do hold myself to kind of high, high standards and high expectations of myself. But I think that's the only way forward, really. Well, I look forward to seeing more of your uh, Van Basten-esque uh, style goals like the one you got at Adams <laughs> Park and hopefully there'll be more of those to come this season. Yeah, so I hope so too. It was, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great goal. I'll see if I can pull that off again. We can wander swimming centre forward Esme Ford, uh, Esme Sword, apologies, who is a, <laughs> Esme Ford, um, who is <laughs> <laughs> who is a psychology student and um, yes speaking to us uh, here at Wickham Sound you can back the chair girls this weekend a two o'clock kickoff on Sunday they're at home once again in the league to Oxford City and uh, you can get along to uh, the 1878 stadium in Burnham kids go free uh, well worth uh, getting behind them for that the reserves uh, play in league action as well they're away to Rye Slip and then the under 18s are also at the 1878 stadium on Saturday morning uh, they face XL I know um, the XL at football uh, they're called um, so yes bear that in mind uh, if you're going along to back them that's a 10.30 kick off uh, to see some of the, the stars of the future uh, for Wickham Wanderers win and uh, make sure you keep listening to the Wickham Wanderers show here on Wickham Sound we'll feature uh, many more chair girls chats with players and coaches and uh, other people <laughs> connected with uh, them uh, here on the Wickham Wanderers show uh, which is a weekly uh, show if you've just discovered us perhaps you've just tuned in this is the third series where have you been? We <laughs> come on uh, you must have heard about it by now uh, if you're uh, not around on a Thursday evening there's a podcast version of the show which is normally uh, available to download from the Friday lunchtime uh, the perfect build up to your Saturday match day you can also get us on the Wickham Sound radio player page uh, we're also on YouTube very popular on YouTube apparently but there's nothing to see <laughs> Not like there's a video, it's not, the show's not filmed or anything, but but it's a good listen on uh, YouTube. Uh, Luke, our producer of the show, he reported that um, someone in quite a, a smart car, not a smart car, but a smart car, um, was uh, in Marlow with his window down listening, <laughs> listening to the Wickham Wanderer show. It's, it's a true story. And uh, also you can catch up with us on the uh, Wickham Sound website, uh, wickhamsound.org.uk. There's a listen again feature, so shows from the past four weeks are there. I think that's everything. Radio player page, YouTube, podcast. Yes, brilliant. Uh, also, of course, on 106.6 FM, you can get full match commentary of all Wanderers games. And uh, there's a match build-up uh, from midday from home games, live from the car park with Robin, Luke and Sally. And for away matches, uh, the build-up starts at two. An hour before kickoff, uh, our match commentator is Phil. 
And, of course, uh, the next game is against Forest Green Rovers this coming Saturday. Uh, Before that, though, uh, we uh, reflect a little on the game uh, on Saturday. Uh, The FA Cup exit in the first round against Walsall at Adams Park. Uh, If you weren't there, we played you some uh, highlights in inverted commas uh, from the game uh, earlier in the show. Uh, But I was catching up with uh, manager Gareth Ainsworth a little earlier on, uh, looking back on that game. But first, talking of the competition, if you were listening last week, uh, you'll know that uh, the manager got himself some tickets to go and see uh, Bracknell Town, uh, not far from where he lives, uh, take on Ipswich on Monday night. Here's how that went. Yeah, it was uh, it was a nice nice respite for from me because obviously we had a disappointing one on Saturday, but um, it was good to go and see a local team. I know a lot of Bracknell fans, uh, and uh, and yeah, we, I thought they did really well, especially first half. You know, pressed us, pressed Ipswich quite high, and uh, I think they ran out of steam. If I'm if I'm honest, I think that um, Ipswich's fitness and and sort of pace and and you know the the, the physical attributes really put pay to to Bracknell rather than any. Anything football wise, because I think uh, Bracknell set up really well to to try and counter that. It was just, you know, you could feel it. You could feel it that they were running out of steam in that second half. And uh, fair play to him for holding on so long. I was, uh, I was, you know, I was pleased to see that. I went along with Phil Alexander, who's uh, an ex manager of Bracknell, I think. So it was a it was a nice moment. Um, don't often use my privileged status to get to games, but I wanted to go to that one, and uh, and it was uh, it was very entertaining. And uh, obviously, uh, like I say. Quick, quick forgetting of uh, of Saturday's game, which I was disappointed with. You know, it was uh, it was tough to take. Um, but you know, we move on now to the league this Saturday, and uh, looking forward to getting a fully fit squad back with a couple of rested last week as well. If there's any positives from last week, you know, we rested a couple of people, uh, and they uh, they should be firing for this weekend now. On a game like Walsall, do you quickly put that behind you, or do you take things from it and then use that to sort of focus to work on to build on to the next game? No, we have to learn from it. Yeah, definitely. We have to review it and learn from it. And that's what we did this week. Um, there's certain fundamentals that would, would, you know, play a part in any game. You know, you, you can't just, uh, you can't just say, Oh, don't worry about the cup. Now we, we, we go back in and, and analyze why, why it went wrong and, and what we could have done better. And, uh, and I think that, um, the, the boys enjoy that now. The modern player enjoys feedback. He enjoys learning. You know, I think in, in the old days, it was a little bit of, uh, get on with the next one. Can't wait for it. Um, but now with all the recovery and the, uh, and the fitness and the, and the tailored training programs, there's time now to, uh, to, to get, and, and the analysis and, and footage and, and programs you, 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 you know, got access to. It's good to be able to rip things apart and, uh, and, and, piece the game together and say what went wrong, where it went wrong, why it went wrong and uh, and how can we be better next time and and I think that was important, especially some of the young boys who played and uh, Jack Wakeley obviously getting his first real start apart from the Carabao, you know, so I've got some positives from there, very disappointing to to, to be out of the FA Cup because it's a competition I really do enjoy and, and like and, uh, and I wish I'd have been in that next round but um, unfortunately uh, the trip to was it trip to Carlisle or home to Carlisle? I can't remember what they got. So it was uh, either or. We uh, we we missed out on that, and uh, and that would have been a nice chance to to get to round three. But um, we have to concentrate on the league now. I know it's an adage, it's an old cliche, but um, this is what we've got now, the league. And uh, you know, we're not even halfway through, and I'm comfortable where I'm not. I'm not totally happy. I think we could be two or three points higher in the league. Um, looking back at the games with key moments, but um comfortable and uh, and I think going into the second half of the season with the injured boys returning I think we'll be very strong and uh, I think you'll be seeing a whole different different picture and uh, and I think there'll be some teams fading away and, and some coming from behind and we're just steady steady where we are um, like I say no panic we've had the best three years recently of this club's history maybe we can just get in those playoffs again this season which would be a fantastic achievement Has it felt like you've had a bit of extra preparation time because it seems like this is the first week for a while where you've not had a Tuesday game it's been chaos, honestly, Colin. You know, it really has. You know, with the Saturday Tuesdays coming up thick and fast. As a player, I used to love that, um, but as a manager, I hate it. There's, there's not very little planning time, you know. And, and like I say, with the pitches getting heavier, um, the training times, the risk of injury, players getting injured, players getting suspended. You know, you're chopping and changing the team, which doesn't help. Um, I'm really pleased that it's Saturday, Saturday now for uh, for quite a while, and uh, and we've got to make full advantage of this now and uh, and put some real good sessions into place, get back to some fundamentals that we do. And, uh, and you know, I'm, uh, I'm looking to to ask the boys for, for a top performance on Saturday because uh, we owe that to uh, to each other and, and we owe that to uh, to Rob and Pete, uh, you know, who've, uh, who've stayed strong with uh, with backing us. And such a boost for you. As you say, you've got a fully fit squad to choose from now. 
Yeah, I think Curtis Thompson is probably the only long-term absentee still, and uh, he's he's out on the pitches now, which is great. So they'll be very soon for Curtis to return. But um, we are uh, we are very we are very happy with where we are squad wise now. There's uh, there's one or two returning, which which makes a big difference. And I guess Forest Green will be another game that you'll be you'll be targeting a win. And you know they've not had a great start either. Only two two league victories, and of course uh, we have not been there for a while. Yeah, I mean. It's tough, you know, like, like there is some results that this season that um, have turned the league upside down, you know, top against bottom and Derby Morecambe, I'll, I'll say about last weekend, you know, that was that was one that surprised everyone or the week before when, you know, when we didn't pick up full points against Morecambe, everyone thought it was a disaster and then Derby go and draw with them as well, you know, which is like, well, actually, it might, you know, Morecambe might be better than people think. This league is stronger than people think. Um, uh, I think expectation for Wickham is, uh, is a little bit higher than it should be, but we have got to uh, take full responsibility of that because we've delivered over the last few years and uh, and we've got to make sure that we uh, we now are striving towards that expectation and 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 stepping forward and and taking that on with uh, you know with, with the platform we've we've created for ourselves it's uh, it's been a brilliant like i say past few seasons and uh, and i want to be in them playoffs again it's uh, it's really important and as you say, with the, the players returning, I guess it won't be too long till you know uh, fans and obviously yourself as well start to see sort of the, the team that you're looking for and the you know your strongest eleven that you can put out. Yeah, um, you know, I, I don't think uh, your strongest eleven as a manager you ever know. I think uh, different games, you know, will will warrant different things. I don't think any any even in the Premier League, I don't think even Arsenal at the top there. I don't think he's got a strongest eleven. They'll, they'll still be chopping and changing Arteta one or two players each game. You know, that's what that's what squad does nowadays. Um, back in the day, you probably had an 11 and that was it. But, um, you know, I've definitely got a strong sort of 18. And uh, and once they're all fit, then, wow, we are we are a good force. But, um, you know, seldom get them all fit together. It's uh, it's going to be key to, to keeping everyone fit now, keeping everyone, you know, at top peak condition and, uh, and making sure that we uh, we get the results when we... And we're at full strength. Wickham Wanderers manager Gareth Ainsworth speaking to us a little earlier on today. Interesting that comparison with Arsenal because it doesn't seem too long ago, does it, that uh, Arsenal were down at the bottom of the table and took, took them sort of seven games uh, without winning in the Premier League. And, and look at them now. It's, it's just, just you know, shows you how, how cyclical in football can be. Uh, some news to bring you. Just check out the uh, Wickham Wanderers website before boarding his plane back to the States. Uh, Chairman Rob Kuig caught up with Wanderers TV to review last night's trust meeting where future plans for the club were discussed with members. Uh, there's uh, an in-depth video interview uh, for you to, uh, to take in there. As I say, that's on uh, Wickham Wanderers website. Uh, you can hear from the chairman his thoughts on last night's meeting with the trust and uh, a number of sort of takeaways and hopefully some uh, clarification uh, with that and the future of the club and its ownership and uh, plans for going forward and that sort of thing. Hope you've enjoyed the Wickham Wanderers show this week. We'll be back at the same time next week. Uh, it's, of course, the uh, week of... Uh, well, we'll be looking back at Forest Green Rovers uh, game, hopefully all three points and climbing up the table. And also, of course, we'll be previewing the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association dinner, uh, which is next Friday. Uh, following weeks on the show, of course, we'll be uh, bringing you some uh, brilliant interviews from that event. Very much looking forward to attending that. I'm sure the food's very good, apart from anything else. And uh, just a quick reminder that we've got live commentary, as I say, uh, from Forest Green Rovers. Kick off at three o'clock on uh, 106.6 FM, Wickham Sound, and also on Wanderers TV as well. Have a great seven days, and uh, as I say, uh, check out the podcast version if you've just tuned in and wanted to know what it's about. Should be available from lunchtime tomorrow. Have a great week, and uh, fingers crossed for three points on Saturday.